When you walk in, you truly do feel like you're walking into someone's shop or someone's house. This is the star of the whole place. This is why I wanted to come here, to find out more about the history of the public bath in Tokyo. Japan have done a lot to protect their cultural property. If you go to Kyoto, or even an area that is closer to Tokyo such as Chiba, you can come across buildings in which the traditional structure has been restored and preserved. The people who reside there have to maintain the historic integrity of their home. However, some buildings are impossible to preserve. Since the Edo period, many have been lost to disasters, and others, such as the traditional Japanese public bathhouse, are disappearing due to Tokyo's rapidly expanding economy. Because of this, important buildings have been moved, restored, and exhibited. So today, we take a trip to Kogane to step back in time, find out more about life during the Edo period, and discover the cultural significance of the Japanese public bathhouse, the Sento. We're being true tourists today. This house is actually really interesting to me because when I lived in Shinyurigaoka, a lot of houses there looked like this one. The Edo Tokyo Open Air Architectural Museum houses buildings that have cultural and historic value. Certain factors made it impossible for these buildings to be maintained and preserved in their original location, so they have been moved here. Visitors can enter the buildings, learn about the architecture, and find out more about the families that used to live and work within them. It's an incredibly immersive experience that really makes you feel like you are in bygone Japan. It's amazing. I absolutely love this. This living room reminds me of our Nico trip. I love the layout of this house just because it's so airy. There are so many windows, there's a lot of light, and it's got the traditional paneling, the paper panels as well. And an interesting fact about all of these places, about all of these houses, is that the museum tried to keep the landscaping very similar to the original. So pretty much what you see here is what it was like. There's just so much natural light here. I think if I had to pick a place to live, it would probably be somewhere like this. The house of George de Lalonde. So John just mentioned that he thinks that this house looks like an 1850s homestead in America. It does say that it was originally built in Shinanomachi Shinjuku Ward, but it is a Western style home. They have ice cream and they have pancakes and coffee. This is such a pretty cafe. John, do you know what this feels like? Disneyland. Even the spoon is pretty. It's like the most beautiful setting to have ice cream ever. These drinks are so cute though. Also, mine has coffee ice cubes in it to keep the drink nice and cold without watering it down. I got the Ichigo and John got the vanilla soft serve. It's kind of cool because you get to sit in this building and like experience it. Here's syrup and then there's some milk or cream. It seems like it's cream. Oh, and coffee ice cubes. This is such a dark coffee. Right? It's not watered down at all. I'm gonna be like flying off the walls after drinking this. Okay, so I loved that cafe. You can also sit outside on the terrace too, just over there. It's beautiful and we got to experience the building from the inside. I was impressed. It feels a little bit like a beautiful Edo educational theme park. I feel like I'm in Disneyland, in Edo Disneyland. Oh, it smells good. Oh, it smells like, like wood. I would live here. I genuinely would. I would love the rustic lifestyle. There are some features that can still be found in traditional Japanese homes. For example, the irori, which is a multifunctional fireplace that looks like this. It is primarily for cooking food, but it also provides heat during the colder months. Another feature are tatami mats. In Japan, the size of the room is often measured by the number of tatami mats that can fit on the floor. Because Japan is hot and humid in the summer and freezing cold in winter, the tatami mats help insulate the home and at the same time block out the summer heat. And as sleeping on a futon is still common, the tatami mats also provide a comfortable base for the thin mattress. 
This is incredible. This is actually a city train model that used to serve the route from Shibuya station to Shimbashi. So even though this city train model was made in 1962, it's actually really similar in its decor and design to basically any train card you will see in Tokyo or Kyoto or anywhere else in Japan today. The biggest difference that I personally notice is the advertisements. The advertisements are all black and white and newspapery here, but now in Tokyo they're super bright, they're super colorful, they're really engaging. I mean, this is basically a tram, isn't it? But it looks, John, look inside. It looks so similar to any other train you would find today in Japan, right? Yeah. But the biggest difference, I think, is where the conductor sits and also the advertisements. They're all vintage looking. Mm -hmm. Because now the advertisements on trains are just wild. They are insane. It sounds really spooky in there. Yeah. It's like creaky. <gasps> Whoa, it's like, a, it's like a different city. This area of the outdoor museum is probably my favorite because it has shop fronts and little public buildings and this cosmetics manufacturer. It's just insane. It's quite odd because when I walk into these buildings, I feel like I'm walking into someone's house. I feel like I'm walking into an actual shop. As you walk in, you have this setup I mean, you have the please do not touch sign, but your eye kind of misses that. And instead you have this setup, which makes you feel like you're in a real shop. It's very immersive. So this is the kitchenware store. Can we go inside? Oh, we can actually go inside. Oh no, I feel like I'm intruding. I actually do feel like I am in a real shop. The setup of these stores and the reconstructions of the buildings, they're so immersive and so realistic that when you walk in, you truly do feel like you're walking into someone's shop or someone's house. The attention to detail, like looking at everything that's being sold here. Can I buy it? This is Yamatoya's store and it's a grocery store. And at the front, there's a little cigarette kiosk. This is one of my favorite buildings. It was built in 1928 in Shiro Kanadai Minato Ward. The items on display inside the store are just props, but they represent what a pre-war grocery store would look like. You can buy some mushrooms, eggs, dried squid. I think those are sardines. Oh, kombu. Is this, is this even real squid? Do you think that's real dried squid? No. Plastic? Yeah, probably. I can't tell, everything looks so real, doesn't it? Even loose grains and beans. This is like a proper shop, it's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a florist across the road as well. Can you visit the florist? It smells so good in here. Okay, no, now I am freaked. It smells like flowers in here. None of these are real. Oh, no, none of these are real, but it actually smells like flowers. I feel like maybe they've added um, some kind of a scent in the air to actually make it smell like a flower shop. I am so impressed right now. Did you just say alcohol and tomatoes? Yeah. Don't look. Kid in beer. Can you see a kid in beer? Mm -hmm. That's what it smells like. That's the center. This is the star of the whole place. This is why I wanted to come here. This was in a dachi ward. Kodakarayu was a public bathhouse located in Senju, a dachi ward. And it opened in October 1929. It is said that it was constructed by the owner's favorite workman from the owner's hometown in Ishikawa prefecture. Okay, we have to take off our shoes and carry them in a plastic bag. I'm so happy that we can actually go in here and see inside the public bathhouse. During the Edo period, 
the Japanese public bathing culture began to thrive. This brought about a type of communal bathhouse called the Sento, where the customers would pay, strip off their clothes, take a shower, and sit in the large steamy hot pools together. Before moving on, I want to establish the difference between a sento and an onsen. Onsen is the name for a Japanese hot spring. Due to Japan's intensive volcanic activity, you can find natural hot springs all over its islands. Many traditional Japanese establishments use this hot spring water in either private or public bathing facilities. And over here, you have the onsen. And it is a private onsen, so you don't have to worry about being naked in front of other people. Although similar to the onsen in some aspects, a sento does not use the hot spring water for its pools. Instead, the water comes from a man-made source and therefore lacks some of the therapeutic benefits associated with the onsen water. And I personally have been to several sentos and onsens. Um, I prefer onsens just because I think there is more beneficial properties to the water. The center was popularized out of economic need. Edo was rapidly developing and more people arrived to work and live there. Not many households had a private bath or a foro, so it was a practical solution. So what you'd do is you'd wash yourself here, and then you would get into the sento, and you would relax. Maybe this is the plunge pool because it's separate from the other two. Or you can sit here and wash yourself here and you've got the mirrors. Mirrors in Japanese showers are actually quite common and I'm guessing the idea comes from public bathhouses. So when I first arrived in Japan, I actually felt that having a mirror was kind of odd, but now I'm used to it and it's, it's quite helpful, you know, when you shower to have a mirror. The sento also served a community purpose. Edo Japan had a rigid social stratification where the elite did not mix with the regular citizens. But when it came to the sento, people could bathe together without the stigma of their class. Over time, as more sentos were built, the more the practice of public bathing permeated the Edo culture. Look at the wall, we've got Mount Fuji. The sento also had to be aesthetically pleasing. Even to this day, inside the remaining traditional sentos, there is often a mural in the bathing area. As of 2017, there were only three remaining sento mural painters in Japan. The number of sentos are rapidly decreasing. They lack the unique therapeutic selling point of onsen water and a link to a geographical location such as Kinosaki or Hakone. These areas were able to capitalize on onsen tourism. As major cities in Japan are rapidly developing, most modern apartments come with their own bathing facilities, meaning that sento culture has been in a steady decline. The frequency of disasters have also left an impact. The remaining smaller neighborhood sentos are a piece of Japan's past. But honestly guys, if you come to Japan and you've never been to a sento or an onsen, just, just try it. Trust me, you'll be missing out on so much Japanese tradition. It's actually really, really relaxing. When I first went to an onsen, I thought it was a bit weird <laughs> and I was definitely awkward, but now I'm just used to it. It's super windy outside and the security guard just lost his hat. <laughs> It's currently closing time and we have tried to explore as much of this outdoor museum as possible. It was amazing. We had a really good time. The cafe was just lovely. Look at this beautiful cycling trail.